Restaurant Unstoppable. Inspire, empower, and transform the industry. Um, so, I mean, we there's still so much story to tell. Uh, so, you guys obviously open. Uh, it's a huge success. You you were originally a QSR or a counter service. You you switched to the the full service. In today's age, I I almost encourage more and more people to consider moving away from full service because of the labor expenses that are associated in this market. Um, and I think the future is very automated. Unfor- like some people look at that as a scary thing. I think it could be a good thing because it's going to free up human bandwidth. Um, would you? What are your thoughts on that now? Like, if would you do a Dep- full service it, now? Or you know, for me, I I understand the business of 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 QSR and fast casual. I really do. I understand it. Me as a hospitality focused individual when and if i get back into the restaurant business you know a few years down the road after i you know work on this project that i'm working on um i won't do a qsr people used to ask me what i do for a living and i used to tell them i'm a memory maker it's really really hard to make memories in a counter service model i love making people happy i love treating people to an experience that they can remember forever hopefully that experience is good sometimes (laughs) you don't always win right but, you know, I, I believe in the restaurant industry as an experiential uh, moment in time that you have to make an impact on somebody's life to really give them, uh, you know, a, you know, people come in to the restaurant with problems, right? That like it's if, if, as small as I'm hungry and I'm thirsty, but typically people walk into a restaurant after a day's, wor- a days of work or a long week and they come in on a brunch and they really just want to like enjoy themselves. And people's sense of enjoyment uh, fluctuate and are wide varied, right? Like some people really need super high, you know, high, uh, 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 like like really high attention, um, and and others just want to, you know, you can sit down next to them and look them, you know, put put your hand on their shoulder and and say, hey, sit back, relax, and let me take care of this for you. You know, like you guys don't even look at the menu. I'm going to make this an amazing experience, um, and so. I believe in that. I believe in that at my core. It is what I love to do. It is what I've done for so many years. And so though fast casual, I totally understand for where we are today and like the potential of automation down the road. And, but you know, I just believe if there's two different kinds of restaurateurs, there's the ones that want to get rich and then the ones that are really, really passionate. And sometimes you have the ones that want to get rich and are passionate, but it's very, very difficult to stay passionate. Um, if you really only care about the P and L, yeah, you know, which type of restaurant tours were you and Daniel going into the meatball shop? Daniel and I were very different. <laughs> Daniel, by the way, is one of the most passionate guys I know, but he cares way more about the bottom line than I did. Mm-hmm. I was really passionate about creating something great, and I really wanted to. I didn't. I didn't. You know, when before Dan and I went opened up the meatball shop together, we actually took a trip to the White Mountains in New Hampshire, a camping trip, five days, intense trek. And when we were driving up there, I said, you know, what's your goal here? Like, what do you want to do? And he looked at me straight face and said, I want to be a billionaire. And I, he asked me what I wanted to do. And I said, you know what, man, I want to be able to serve people and, and, and make people happy and have a house upstate with a dog and my wife and some, and some kids and be able to be comfortable. And, you know, knock on wood, man, like I pulled that off, you know, I really did. And and it's so interesting. I haven't thought about that in a long time. But, um, you know, Dan is one of the hardest workers I know. He's one of the smartest guys I know. He's definitely the best chef I know. And um, he is adamant on creating super sound business. Um, And sometimes you win and sometimes you lose, you know. Yeah. So you guys in five years went from one location to five locations. Three years. Three years. One location to five locations. Six. Six locations. Mm -hmm. Holy crap. Um, reflecting back at that time, I mean, what were, what were the things that you did right to, to give yourself that opportunity to scale? And then what were the lessons you learned about scaling? Cause I mean, there's always curveballs that are thrown when you think it's going to go a certain way. And then it always almost never goes the way you think it is. Did that happen to you guys? Yeah. Well, I also want to say one other thing before I answer that question. Um, (laughs) 